everyone. Welcome to the Art Workshop. My name is Christopher Epling. I'm so happy you tuned in today. We have a very special episode in store for you. This one, we're not going to really be needing a whole lot of extra materials. So you can easily follow home. At home, all you really need is paper, pencil, and an eraser. Um, I do want to say, though, to begin with, that the materials that you're going to need are a pencil. However, I'm going to be using more than just one pencil today. I'm going to be using a couple different ones, okay? Now, in today's episode, our subject matter is going to be shading, but we're going to be looking at a very, very interesting composition. Composition is what your drawing is made of, right? So if I have some things sitting on a table, uh, still life as they call it, maybe an apple, a cup, maybe it's a piece of fabric, um, that's, my comp that's my still life composition. Air composition today is going to be that of a um, um, conch shell. So a conch shell, of course, being what you typically find or think of the most in the ocean. But different types of conchs are also uh, found in streams in eastern Kentucky, believe it or not. Snails. So the snails that you see, the little snails that are coming out around springtime, have shells. And the pattern and the form of that shell is perfect for trying to learn how to do shading. Now, in terms of the materials you're going to need, like I said, real simple, but I brought in something I want to share with you at least so you can see it as an option if you're really interested in getting into art or maybe you're interested in getting into specifically drawing with graphite and color and uh, pencils. So let me show you a little bit about what I've got today. So this is a set that you can get absolutely anywhere. This set is a basic drawing set that is made up of, of course, a racer. You got a sharpener. You have some sketching type pencils in different range. So you've got maybe a 2B, a 3B, a 4H, so on. There's a couple of charcoal sticks here. Now you notice it's been open. A couple of things are missing out of here. One of the things I've been using a lot, that's a blending stick. So what this is, is really tightly compressed paper. Um, instead of using your finger to blend like some people do, and I have see a lot of students do, this little tool here will save you a mess on your hands. The other thing missing out of here is the sharpener for this. So this has to be sharpened. The more you use it, it gets worn down. All that is, though, is sandpaper. So sandpaper is missing, but the rest is still intact. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. And the one thing I want to do, since we're not going to be working with color today, we'll go ahead and get rid of our charcoal browns. And we're going to get rid of our charcoal sticks, too. Now, these are great. They're really good in terms of uh, the depth, but of color you get, but this is really what we're focusing on today, okay? Set that aside. So grab your paper and let's get started. The first thing we need to do, of course, is to draw out our composition. I have an eraser nearby too, so you need that sometimes, don't forget that. Now there's different ways to shade. Let me start off by showing you this, I guess. That might be a good way to start. And let me see if I can pull it, maybe flip this over like that. So when you're shading, there's different styles. I'll draw a couple circles here to show you. Don't draw along with me now, just watch. One, two, three. Okay, three circles. Imagine that our light source is coming in this direction, okay? That means the back part back here is gonna be darker than the front. There's a few ways you can shade. Now, the first part is called hatching. Hatching is going back and forth, making straight lines, or at least lines in the same direction and kind of form it like that so that you have a little bit of a shade, okay? This is great. So we got hatching, right? Now, the next way to uh, go about it is smudge. Now, with smudging, you want to start out same way, basically, that you would with the cross hatching, except you don't really have to go and worry about going in one direction. Once you have that there, use your finger or a smudge stick and you blend it in like that. Now that looks a lot different than that first one in terms of how it blends, but still works great. The third way is called, believe it or not, scumble. Now, scumble is pretty fun. That, you don't have to worry about what direction you're going in. You can go in circles, back and forth. Turn your pencil usually to the side. The real difference between this and the other ones is that with this one, it's kind of like setting yourself up to smudge, but you never do smudge, right? You do all your blending using just the pencil, okay? Now, there's one more I want to share with you. We just got to put cross at the beginning of this, cross hatching. Starting in one direction like we did here. Instead now, 
we're going back the opposite direction, making lines that actually cross hatch the other one, all right? And this just helps to get more shadow in there, more tone, if you want to call it tone, okay? We're going to be using a variation of different types of techniques today. But let's start out with taking our pencil. Let's see, I had a 6B there. We're going to start with this 2B pencil here. Usually the pencils you have at home are 4H pencils, um, which is perfectly fine. Now here's what we're going to do. I have my reference over here I'm going to be looking at. The first thing I want you to do is draw a circle right in the middle of your page, real big, the best you can. do not have to be a perfect circle. All right, we have somewhat of a perfect circle, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Nothing like a perfect circle. Now what I want you to do is drop down below it here, right on this right-hand side, and draw this line coming out. And then you're going to bring this line back up towards the top of your circle, just like that. See? Now we have the formation of a snail shell. Try saying that real fast a few times. Now our snail shell is almost done, except for we need to add the lines that make up the actual conch-like shape, right? Uh, the form of the shell. In order to do that, I'm actually going to get rid of this line here now, or most of it. So you go ahead and do the same at home. Get rid of that portion of the line so you have a little bit down here. Now instead of this line going all the way to the top and connecting, here's what we're going to do. We're going to bring this line going up towards the top. We're going to come back in real fast though. Keep going around, 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 like a spiral, like that, see? Now I can already tell up here at the top I want to shape that up a little bit better. You can shape yours up too if you need to. The idea though is for this to be nice and smooth. There shouldn't be a whole lot of edges. They look like a little bit of an edge to me there, but you know, I can be a little bit stickler for things, so sometimes I can overdo it for sure, but it might have been fine the way it was. But there, that's a little bit better. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to imagine, just like we looked with the balls earlier, remember the example I gave you, and I'm just shaping mine up a little bit more too here. Remember with the example that I gave you, I decided where the light source was coming in, right? So we need to do that with this too. So let's imagine that our light source is coming in from up here, that direction, right? That means everything opposite in terms of the lines of this light source is going to have shadow. So what I like to do is I start out with a heavy, dark pencil. Now this one is a 4B. Now this isn't necessarily a lesson on the variations of the pencil, but um, we will learn a little bit about it. So let me explain to you like this. Pencils, when you look at them, have those numbers. Those numbers represent how dark the graphite is inside them. It's almost like a scale, and it's set up like 4B, 6B, 5B. All the Bs are darker, and the Hs are lighter. It starts out in zero, and then it goes up in both or down in both directions. So you can think of it like this. You have an HB pencil. Okay. Then from there, what you have is maybe a uh, 2B, 3B, 4B, 2H, 3H, 4H. This is a scale, and this is the lot lighter and darker portions of the scale, okay? All right, so now I'm using a 4B pencil. It's kind of dark. Now watch what happens. I'm going to basically go back and forth in this motion and I'm going to darken in this portion of the shell. This is raised up higher. Now there's a little bit of a portion of this one that's raised up here. Not a lot, but you can imagine the shell, if this was a, actually a real shell setting before me here, okay? Imagine that you see the lines and the grooves, how it's raised up and down on this shell, okay? So that means there's going to be certain portions that are uh, higher than others. All right, and that's what we're establishing now. Now look what I did here. I went right inside of this line. I didn't go all the way to the edge. I went right inside of it. You see how there's a white line now that's being formed? Okay, that right there is what's going to help you get the 3D effect to this. Inside of this one here, look at this now. Draw a little bit of darkness here. 
not a whole lot going up the edge a little bit of shadow here going up the side of it like this now watch just like you did here jump inside of it just a little bit don't go all the way to the edge and start to put a little bit of shadow in on this side just like that now you're going to repeat this process over and over until you get to the middle of your shell so we're going to continue right here as well so a little bit of darkness here okay and then now we're almost to the middle and in the middle when you get there we'll put a little bit of darkness there and we're done okay now we have this formation starting to appear you notice that we got to keep working that formation though come over here to this edge put a little bit of shadow just under here now if you've noticed on a shell for a snail shell this portion right here usually sticks up higher so we're going to leave that but we want to put a little bit of shadow inside of this area going up towards the top see that go up towards the top getting thinner and thinner as you go up okay now we also want some shadow in this area okay but just like you did here come inside of it just a little bit to start forming your shadow don't go all the way to the edge don't follow your line that you drew exactly you only do that on the inner portions okay here 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 it get a little bit confusing but if you follow along step by step you'll be okay now all i'm doing right now is just putting some shadow down i'm not worried about the shape i'm not worried about well, i'm worried about the shape of the shell but i'm not worried about what direction i'm presenting these in i just want to get it darkened in some this is the part where you're actually just starting to put um, medium on paper up at the top up here a little bit more now this is going more towards our light source but it's still going to have some shadow up here at the top because our shell is curved okay and the light source is coming more down than it is like right to the side of it it's more coming at it at an angle okay so that means over here is going to be darkened in a little bit too let me move my paper down just a little bit so i can get at it there see i went to the edge that time i don't want to do that all the way i want to that may be beneficial for you to um, color this in and go back and erase you can also go about it like that so you can go back and erase around the edge okay i may do that myself we'll see what happens but i want to continue to add a little bit more shadow here remember this is the light source is at a curve so we're kind of looking straight down on the shell at a, maybe a little bit of an angle there we go now i have some shadow that has been sketched in the next step in this is going to be to darken this in some so i'm going to use my smudge stick watch what starts to happen all i'm going to do is darken this in using my smudge stick you can use your finger you uh, have some you can actually take newspaper roll it up kind of tight and you can use that all right i'll smudge this in get it nice and blended all the way around the neat thing is once you get enough of this uh, pigment onto your smudge stick you can actually use your smudge stick to uh, um, color with so you get some graphite on there there we go All right, let's go here. I'm gonna flip it over. There we go. All around the top. Now you can start to see now how this starts to look a little more 3D. Around the edge here. It's pretty loud, I know, but there's a lot of pressure being put down to, all right, to blend that. Now, once you have that general shape done, you can go back now and grab a um, darker pencil. You don't necessarily have to have to use the darkest one you have, but I'm use a pretty dark one, though. And I'm going to start now. Watch what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to do exactly what I did the first time around. This time, however, I am going to darken it in a little darker. And I'm going to follow the same pattern that I put the first lines down, but this time not going all the way out. See how this went around the edge there? Coming up to the top, stopping here. Okay, I'm going to do this area for sure right here. Where there's the most shadow, darkening it in more. And you can do the same thing with yours just by pressing down harder with your pencil. If you have access to maybe a different, maybe a couple different pencils with different um, grades of graphite, that's great. You can use that. You can choose a darker pencil this time. The idea really here is to get nice rounded shapes, you know, that's not got any edges to them. There we go. Coming up into the middle part there and stopping. Now, I'm going to do this right here. So notice where I'm at on mine now. I'm jumping into almost the middle of it this time. And this time I'm going to go around the bottom of this line. Going around. I'm going to draw that in a little better. There we go. And then, of course, here. All right. Now, I'm not done using this one yet. What I want to do now is turn it a little bit on its side. This time, I want to be sure and fill in this portion here a little bit more. Now, this time, I'm actually blending a little more now. Instead of just putting that down really hard and forcefully, I'm blending with my pencil. That means I'm doing little circular motions. See that? Little circular motions going all the way around. And I want to do the same thing here. Not going all the way to the edge. The goal here is to make this, like I said, nice and rounded. All the lines that you make, make them rounded. Okay? See that? How I keep on flowing with this in a circle type pattern? That's the goal. Now, if you kept on doing this over and over and over, you're eventually going to get to the point where you're able to see that the shape starts to become more 3D, okay? But there's patterns in a shell, too. It's not just, the, it's not just a roundedness to it. That's, that's super important, but there's, there's also a pattern found in most shells, and we're going to try our best now to insert a couple of those before we run out of time, okay? So we're going to keep on going in this way now, all up through here. Notice I'm not going all the way out to the edge out here. I'm going almost halfway in. And as I get closer to the edge, the light part here, I am lessening my pressure. See that? All the way around. Now darkening up, now I'm pushing down harder this time. I'm in this area that really has a lot of shadow right here. Going up towards the middle, lighter and lighter and lighter. And I get to this area and again, pressing down harder. Lighter, lighter, lighter now. And harder again. There we go. Now you start to see this forms a little more, a little more shape to it. Maybe put a little bit of darkness here towards the bottom, going up towards the top. A little more shadow there. Like that. Now you can find a lot of shells in the streams, the creeks, up the hollers around eastern Kentucky. There's a ton of snails, right? This time of year especially. The ground starts to get moist, warmer weather. They exit from their um, hibernation and they come out of the ground, right? We start to see them. Now, I can blend this more now. Watch what happens. I'm actually starting to draw a little bit now with this. I'm not just blending. So I may take this and go up this way with it, see, like that. 
Here, watch what I do. I take it like this. Watch how I'm starting to make shapes now. So as you get more and more graphite on your smudger, you can do that with your finger too, but you're gonna have a sore hand by the time you get done with a drawing like this. The goal is to nice, nicely blend that like that. See, I'm gonna go around the middle. See how I'm starting to make a few shapes? Now these shapes are shapes that are very uh, precise. So basically what happens is they have to go in towards the middle all around. So you can't, you can't make them up and down, right? You have to make it almost like everything's being sucked into a vacuum here. That's, the, that's sort of the, the principle of it. So watch what happens. I may first go all the way around like this and smudge it. This might be a better method. Go all the way around like this, smudge it as you can in that direction. See what I'm doing? Now watch, I go in, back and forth. What I'm trying to do is just get some sort of a pattern starting to form. As you get further and further into the spiral, you start then to lessen those lines. They're a little bit thinner as you get in towards the middle, okay? I'm going to do this section now, going up towards the back, and boom, this section too. This is the darkest portion of the shell right here. All right, bring it in. Now, after I've smudged this area, well, that's a little bit right here, I missed, didn't I? After I smudge this area, though, I can go back now with my smudge stick or my finger and make lines, okay? Watch how I'm going back and forth. See that? See how it starts to form, makes these lines coming in towards the middle. So go up here and do the same thing. There we go. You start to see it looks more like a shell now. All of this just with graphite, nothing else, no special means or anything else. Now this is a really quick sketch here. This is one that you can keep on working with. You can play around with it. You can even do this after you've went around it. Go back around with your eraser. And what you're wanting to do is erase just between, look, just between the darkened shadow and the outline of your shell, okay? See that? I'm not trying to erase a whole lot. I just want a little line to go around, down the back of my shell. This just helps to make the form of the shell look a little bit more defined. And it helps to shape up your drawing. See? See what's happening? Uh, now, you could be really precise with your pencils and get the same effect, but, but having this as an option with the eraser is super helpful, especially if you're messy like me. There we go around like this right here, down in this middle part. Middle part you have to be a little more careful with. Um, you want to just give a little bit of some light reflecting in certain areas. You don't want to go overboard with it. You can even draw with your eraser. So now you go back and forth in the middle. You can see how this starts to really start to show what I'm doing here in a second. I'm going back and forth with my eraser. right in the middle portion that has the most light on it. So around here, going in this direction, going all the way around. Now here you start making a little bit larger motions with your hand. 
down to the middle part here. And of course erase this area. There you go. Now if you were to repeat this process over and over and over again, what would happen is this would start to pop out more and more and more and more, okay? Um, what really helps though to make it really pop out to you is if you were to take a black colored pencil or a very, very dark pencil, maybe like a 6B, something very dark, and you go back over it now, watch what happens. If I color around the edge of my shell, which I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try to do with the time remaining here. I'm gonna try to go around. Darkening this area in causes everything else in your drawing to pop out. So watch what happens. Here we go. Now you may have to, I'm only gonna be able to do the outline of the shell this way, but if you were to take do this at home, you could take time and do a nice, you know, full dark background and it would really pop out. The only bad thing about doing this, or I won't say bad, but one of the things you have to watch out for is when you lay your hand down on your drawing, right? When you're going around in that circle and you're trying to color the outside of this, you want to be careful not to smudge all your work. And that can definitely happen. There we go. But I just want to at least get the outline so you can see what it looks like after we darken it in some. Go towards the light source up here. Now the light source, you don't have to really worry about shadow and darkness right now. Because all you're really doing is just trying to get the outline of the shell. And you're trying to at least darken in the background so that the, the, uh, the shell pops out. Okay? Almost done. Around here, this direction. Now, like I said, if you have time, I would darken in a lot of this area. You can also shape your shell up now as well. Maybe if when you first drew it, it wasn't, it had some edges to it. You can go back and fix that, okay? If you have an ink pen or a felt tip marker, really, you could go around and do this again that way. See, right here, I can shape this up. Make it look a little bit better, see? Like that, there we go. So a conch shell, all we did was just a little bit of uh, graphite. Now, like I said, though, keep working this. You could go in and keep on darkening this in more and more. You could work on this to the point where it's really nice and black and dark, where the shadows need to be. Repeat that process over and over. So you, you go over, smudge it, erase it, go over it, smudge it, erase it. Always sign your work. There we go. Please, if you followed along, if you drew your own shell today, let's say you uh, worked on yours and have it nice and um, sketched out and you want to share it with us, I'd love to share your work. We share it right here on the show. So send it to us, PikeTV99 at gmail.com, okay? Send in your work. Uh, let, let us know who you, know, who, who you are. Look, leave your name. If you want to leave your age, you can. Um, and uh, we'd love to share your work with, uh, with our viewers here on the art workshop, okay? So thank you so much for tuning in today. I appreciate you and your time. And uh, on behalf of Pike TV, remember, enjoy spring. It's here. Find some snails and better yet, draw one, right? So thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, I'm Christopher Epley. On behalf of Pike TV, keep drawing.